I took a beautiful PlayStation 5 and spent 10 months putting it into a bigger and boringer custom case. I'm gonna tell you this story, not just to shame myself by outing my failures, but to give you a huge head start if you're wanting to mod a PlayStation 5 yourself. I thought bringing Skyreach design language to a console that could be taken apart by the end user was a fantastic idea. I enlisted my buddy Eric, and we both sourced PlayStation 5 consoles from early adopters so we could work in tandem. The first thing we noticed is the PlayStation 5 has a complicated cooling system, and there wasn't a clean way of using a top-down fan to, to meaningfully compact it into a custom case. The second problem is that our PlayStation 5s were built slightly different from each other, and even slightly different from the iFixit teardown which soon followed. Along with some other challenges of disassembly, and seeing how good the PlayStation 5 looked in person, after only a month of working on the project, we decided this chassis would not be a good fit for NFC. My backup plan was to purchase the PlayStation 5, and to design a crazy liquid cooling system for it with custom blocks, giant radiators, the works. My friend who loaned me the PlayStation 5 wanted it back. I also kind of owed him a case after borrowing his console on launch day and taking it apart. The PlayStation 5 is a complicated piece of hardware. In order to get a super flat perspective, which would make tracing it in CAD much more accurate, I used a really long lens, and I stood really far back, and then I cropped really far in. I had to do this from every angle, and from there I had to reference each drawing against each other to get the dimensions as close as possible, and I realized how much work it was going to be and started to feel overwhelmed. Particularly since this was one of the many projects and expenses I had going at the time, so I decided to cheat and hire somebody, but I did not get back good results. On top of being expensive, they were absolutely awful, Worse than the example cat I sent them. I had to force myself to model this board accurately. Nothing felt flat or even. Curved and stepped surfaces everywhere. And there were so many layers. Do you ever have a school or work project that just completely overwhelms you before you get started and you want to crawl into your bed and hide? Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, though, I gripped my teeth and got it done. I used a laser to cut test sheets out of cardstock to make sure everything actually fit. Now, I, I used to print these out in CAD on a PDF and then use an X-Acto knife to cut everything out. But now that I can use the Creality Falcon 2, it uh, saves uh, days of time. With the board modeled accurately enough, I had to overcome the challenge of figuring out how to mount it into a case. I ended up designing many 3D printed standoff trees, and these would make an even mounting surface for the two metal 90 degree braces which would then hold the board to the center of the chassis. The PlayStation 5 on the bottom has a stand mount in the frame, which I also utilized. The next step was figuring out how to preserve the PlayStation 5's cooling. The interior case of the PS5 is a combination of ducts and baffles to channel air through the fan and heat sinks, which are all over the case. If I just put a lid on it, it would cause it to overheat, because the air wouldn't get to where it needed to go. So I began designing baffles and ducts of my own. Here's how it works. First, air comes through the side panel, and passes a printed seal that funnels it into a turbine fan. A large curved baffle, with which the side panel turns into a duct, slings air around back to the opposite direction through the power supply and through the primary heatsink fin stack. It exhausts at the side via the NFC scone slots and is protected from recycling by an upper baffle. That's side one. A divider is needed for the two sides so the rear side can vent via positive pressure. This side gets air from the center of the turbine and then it builds up into this large chamber and then flows past the rear fin stack and out the side panel. The next step is to design the chassis, which is the surrounding frame that holds everything together and acts as a spine. I opted for a very simple design, the basis of which I've used before, but for the rear, I wanted to try Sin's new joggle service. A jogger joggle is when a piece of sheet metal has two opposing shallow bins that are offset enough just so the material can overlap nicely. I ordered the metal parts from Sincut Send, and they got here super fast as usual. What was not usual is that my rear part was not bent correctly. Now, I'm not sure if that file was used, or maybe just the measurements, but whatever it was, something got mixed up and my part wasn't going to fit. I was well over my budget for this in money and time, so I decided to make something in-house the same day. After doing some measurements and test fits, 
I cut out the rear using a 3mm black piece of acrylic with the Creality Falcon 2. When cutting this, I felt great shame in deviating from my original plan, but after cutting and test fitting, it actually looks better than what I had planned. Because this piece bolts to a metal flange that acts as a spine, it's very stout and performs its function perfectly. After my last 3D printing project, I decided it was high time I stopped using the Mark Forge as a crutch and learned the process. Several viewers commented about the inaccessibility of my Mark Forge because of its price and its large 2D build size. Longer saw this and reached out about sending the Elkai 5 Pro. It has a big build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 and it's quite inexpensive, so if it works, it could be an option for these people. The only challenge I had was leveling the bed, but that was because the sticker for the limit switch I <laughs> accidentally removed prematurely. Now, after several print failures, I learned a few things. One, I now have to care about things like fill density and pattern. Two, I need to use glue to keep print from sticking permanently to the bed. And three, I need to select the filament type in Cura and not just the printer. But after some basic tuning and learning, I got some great prints for the project, which there are quite a few. Side note, I've been making LEGO compatible bezels for the S4T and the Mark Forged. And as you might know, LEGO bezels are insanely precise and require tight tolerances. I spent a couple days trying to get the LK5 to give me usable results, probably out of curiosity, and the good news is that I totally can. Really, it was the software, Cura, that I had to learn, but if I can print a LEGO compatible base plate with this printer, my confidence in the product is very high. In the time I've had it, I printed many household objects to use at my spool of Sunlu PETG, a clean-out cap for the plumbing in my house, a jig for acrylic hardline tubing, parts for friends' computers like GPU braces, shrouds, and washers, and I'm prototyping a replacement switch for a leaf blower battery. I don't really have enough experience to comment how good the filament is or not, but I've had no accidents or problems with this Sunloop PETG. Anyway, if you have 3D printing experience, please share with me in the comments. I would love to learn. <laughs> I'm still a big newbie thanks to the Mark Forge baby me for four years. I had painted the metal parts in a white epoxy over the weekend and let them sit a couple days, but it was not enough with how hot and humid it's been. I ended up damaging the paint and having to repaint it. I was stressed and in a hurry, so I didn't fully disassemble it and relied on a masking job too much. This caused me an entire week of work using mineral oil to scrub everything down to remove the overspray. The rest of the assembly went pretty well because I had already made a dozen revisions of everything from the standoff trees to laser cut templates. The only issue I had was it had been so long since I designed this thing I had forgotten about the strict assembly order so I did have to redo a few things. For example, the upper air baffle, I had to redesign to fit and clear the components in the real world. After a little time in CAD and printing on the LK5 Pro, it was good to go. The last piece is the wooden front bezel. This is about as simple and lazy as I could possibly get. I cut a beautiful piece of curly maple on the Creality Falcon 2, definitely one of my favorite tools at this point. It did require a lot more power than walnut or cherry, but I put the settings in the description so you can get perfect cuts the first time. I then bored four holes for magnets, being very careful not to drill through, and even more careful to glue and press them in. My friend doesn't use the disk drive or front ports on his PlayStation, but I want easy access in case things change. It also doesn't block the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth antenna because it's wood. The most miraculous thing about this project is that after 10 months of being moved around my office, measured, bumped, handled, installed, and uninstalled, is that it all still worked. Perfectly, in fact. Better than stock, in fact, as the fan doesn't have to work as hard because it's not behind a ton of plastic. Of course, that's just seat of your pants noise comparison, but my friend also commented how quiet it was while gaming when he got it back. If I had the 3D files I have now, and know what I know now, I could make something really cool, but I am not going to. I usually reserve special files for Patreon, but I want as many people to have access to the PlayStation 5 model and telemetry as possible, because it really would have helped me out during this process. So you can download it in the description below. My other motto is show, don't tell, and I've done a lot of telling, so thank you for sticking through to the end. Oh.